As we gather on this first Sunday in December, this second Sunday in the season of Advent, we gather acknowledging the land on, on which our church sits, land that for generations was walked by First Nations peoples, uh, members of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the neutral peoples, their relationship with the land at the center of their spirituality and sense of identity. We have not always honored that relationship, and so we recommit ourselves to living into right relationship with the land, with our First Nations brothers and sisters, that we might live into a time when all might flourish. and welcome to this time and place of worship. Whether you're joining us in real time on Facebook Live or, or later on on Facebook or YouTube, welcome and thank you for being with us this morning. As we gather, we recognize that this is the second Sunday in Advent. Last week we began our journey to Christmas as we entered this Advent season. The word Advent means coming or arrival. It's a four-week period of preparation. And last week we began by lighting the candle of hope. Hope that has the power to stand alone on our Advent wreath, offering its light. Today we light a candle for peace, praying that the flame of peace may always be within us. This is the peace we search for, peace of mind that enables us to think clearly and act with confidence. Peace in our hearts that enables us to feel calm and share compassion. Peace in our spirits, that puts us in touch with God's love and Christ's way. Peace in our homes, at work, at school. Peace when we are among our friends. Peace within the family circle. Peace within us, peace around us. A peace to hold us strong. A peace that encourages us to work as Jesus did for justice and sharing. And so we light our candle of peace. And so let us continue our Advent journey with peace as we sing together. Shines in the night, leading us on. 
us pray. Loving God, as we gather, we gather longing for gentleness amongst all. We gather longing for healing where there has been harm. We gather longing for generosity to inform all actions. We gather longing for peace in all parts of life. As we gather, we worship God in a spirit of peace. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is, There's a Voice in the Wilderness Crying. is a chance to reflect on places in life where we carry brokenness and regret, both as individual people and as a wider society and church. And so let us pray. In this time of promise, we confess that we have not always been people of faithful peace. We have acted in ways that deny peace that ignore the wisdom of other paths of belief, that disrupt the rhythms of other cultures and communities, that put down the gifts of people who differ from us. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of the sacred in our midst, and may your spirit of mercy rest on us as we open our hearts in the silence of this moment. And so as we lift up our heads and our hearts, let us be reminded of God's voice heard above all the chaos, confusion, complacency, and exclusion. God's voice is one that cries out in the wilderness, in the inner city, in the countryside, and in the warmth of shared community with words of forgiveness, assurance, and unending grace. Thanks be to God. 
And so our Christmas carol for the second Sunday in Adventist was in the moon of wintertime. eschatological things, we move into readings that are much more familiar for our, our Advent journey. We're going to begin with a reading from Isaiah that I expect many of you will be able to sing along with your head for, um, for a good chunk of it. It's, a, it's um, uh, the reading from Isaiah that not all of, but a good chunk of um, the first part of Handel's Messiah is, is based on. Um, everything from the opening lines of, of comfort, my people, um, right up to um, uh, he shall feed his flock like a shepherd and, and, and bring the lambs um, uh, uh, in his arms. Um, so we'll, we'll hear that reading, uh, a, a message of, of hope to uh, people of Israel. As I mentioned last week, Isaiah can be divided into three sections, Isaiah 1, 2, and 3. And we heard from Isaiah, the third part of Isaiah last week, um, a reading that assumed, um, presupposes uh, that the people that the prophet is speaking to are back in Judah after the Babylonian exile and things weren't going so well. Well, we're going backwards in Isaiah into second Isaiah, a, um, a set of texts that are filled with hope and promise and presupposes an audience that is currently in exile in Babylon. And these are words of comfort of a return that a return is coming and that it will be a glorious return uh, home after the exile. And then we're going to switch to our gospel reading. And as I have mentioned the past couple of weeks, we've um, entered a new church liturgical year, and we've entered a year that's going to be focusing on the gospel of Mark. Um, the gospel of Mark is the earliest of our gospel accounts to be written. Um, it's the shortest of the Gospels, and in a lot of ways, it's, it's very direct and to the point. Um, there, there, there's not a lot of uh, sort of in-between transitional things. Um, if you read Mark beginning to end, you get a, a series of, well, this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and it, it's, it's very, um, it's a very, in some ways, a, a, a fast or a, a short and very to-the-point account. 
And we're going to start right at the beginning of Mark with, with verse 1 and um, chapter 1, verse 1. And um, in Mark, we don't get some of the stories that we associate with the Christmas season. We don't get a genealogy. We don't get a birth narrative. We jump right into um, Jesus' ministry, beginning with John the Baptist speaking and, and proclaiming that he will um, arrive. And if we read a couple more verses than where those first, I think it's eight verses we're going to read today, um, we would be right into Jesus' baptism story. Um, and so let us hear these two readings. Our reading today is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord's, make straight in the wilderness, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings in Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings in Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads them, those that have young. Second reading is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We bring power up. 
to care. Care enough for his fellow man to give all the love that he can. I pray my wish will come true. And so let us pray. May our thoughts, our words, our deeds always be rooted in your love, gracious God. Amen. Second Sunday in Advent. I know this is a time when, looking back uh, to previous years, that I often take stock of, of how our preparations for Christmas are going, asking about who has their tree up, who has their lights up, who has their Christmas shopping done. Usually also include questions around house preparations as we prepare to gather together in ways that, of course, this year we won't be doing. I've wrestled this week with what to offer, with what to say. What do we say? Second Sunday in Advent, a reading we know well about preparing, and the day after tomorrow, will mark nine months since we last gathered together in person in this sanctuary. How do we talk about preparing for a Christmas that's not going to be our normal Christmas? Those of you I've seen over the past couple of days at the church are aware of, of the struggle I've had this week. I've, I've shared with you that my, my wrestling with, with what to say. You know, at times I've been tempted, and, and, and I, I, I share this, uh, Barb Scott shared this with me on, on Friday, and, and share with permission that we could do as, as, as she'd originally planned, and just not do Christmas this year. Let's just, let's just not do do it, only to find that you might think you're not going to do Christmas, but Christmas is doing everywhere else. Christmas is unfolding. This Advent season is unfolding. And while it may not look the same as usual, Christmas is going to happen. And so we get this, this reading of preparation. It's a reading we get every year about this odd duck named John who dressed a few centuries out of date and was urging people to prepare in a more meaningful, full life-changing experience kind of way. Maybe a way that can speak to us in some ways this year even more so than other years. Kind of preparation that involves change of heart and change of mind. A preparation not just of homes, 
but of our hearts and our minds and our spirits. He quotes from Isaiah. That's a passage we know well. I expect many of you were singing along parts of the Isaiah passage as Janet read. I know there are words that speak to me particularly and, and, and speak to me this year or, or remind me this year of a piece of preparation for Christmas that we won't experience this year. Um, words that, uh, that passage from Isaiah, much of it makes up the, that first section of Handel's Messiah and opens with, that, that words comfort, comfort ye my people, says your God. A simple yet powerful message from Isaiah. And one that actually has two potential meanings. Um, I know when we hear it, we tend to think of, um, I expect the one that comes to mind most easily, a promise of comfort and hope, take comfort. And of course, as I mentioned um, in, in the lead-up to this, this passage comes uh, from that second section of Isaiah, um, words spoken to people in exile, away from their homeland, um, a, a, a message of, of that things are going to be okay again. Um, they're they're, they're, um, they're going to return from exile, and things will be okay again. Um, but a duo meaning, and... and um, that I like to remind us, because it's not one that um, we tend to think when we hear it, but there's an ambiguity in the passage um, that, that um, it's unsure whether, whether the way the, the, the word works in Hebrew, whether it's actually saying take comfort, comfort, or whether it's actually um, in the imperative, comfort my people, says your God. Um, a command or a, a, a request to comfort others, to be the ones doing the comforting. And so as we continue our Advent journey, I leave you with that ambiguity of the prophet's call to comfort, to both take comfort and offer comfort in our world. And may we find that comfort even though this season is going to look a little different this year and, and likely be difficult in some ways, may we find those moments to find comfort in our preparation, to um, those, those, those moments that bring us comfort and those moments that bring us joy. I know... Um, after the conversation on Friday with the social gathering, I went home and I put my Christmas lights up outside. And as I, I, I saw the, the, the lights twinkling, it was a moment of comfort for me. And so um, may we be open over these next couple of weeks to the moments that, that bring us joy and bring us comfort. Amen.
Well, good morning. Tom Smiley here for a minute for our mission. And our mission at Fairview United Church, of course, is embracing faith and sharing God's love. And over the weeks, we've been talking about the many ways that we do that and the many people and groups that have embodied that spirit at Fairview over the last number of weeks, over the last number of years for that matter, but right through the experience of COVID. And today I'm with somebody who needs no introduction, Les Atwood, who just embodies that whole spirit of being dedicated to life here at Fairview. You can walk into the church 80% uh, uh, of the time and, and you see Les, he's always working at something to do with AV and we're so grateful to have had less over the years. I don't know what we would have done, as a matter of fact, if we hadn't had him here during the COVID experience. You may have noticed during the service today that there have been different camera angles and uh, different things going on with the cameras. And again, that's a, a tribute to Les and his research and to uh, finding new ways of doing things as we move forward. And, and we have decided that streaming is going to continue to move forward even the online experience after we've come back together as a congregation. So without further ado, let's talk to Les a bit. Uh, Les, I know that you've had this uh, passion for AV. Where did, where did that come from? How long have you been interested in AV? Well, Tom, it's, uh, it's been a long time. I, almost uh, all my life, I think. I've, uh, I've, um, I think it, my father nurtured it when I was uh, young by... I, Using to take his own pictures on on film back then, and processing them, and printing them, and doing that sort of thing. And then, as I went on to on to high school, the uh, librarian at North Park at the time seemed to notice that I was interested in such things. So he kind of uh, helped me become more um, more involved in uh, in helping with the AV in the school, and. Gradually, I, I got into the point where they actually employed me for a few hours a week to look after the AV at the school. And uh, actually got to the point where it was six hours at one point in time. And then uh, after, I, after I graduated from North Park, I went to Fanshawe College where I took a course called Audiovisual Technician course. And the last half year of that, I went back to North Park and worked there as a student as a as as a, my a work term out of my course, and then after that they employed me there for another eight years, and and it kind of went on through. And after that, I went to the head office of the board, where they did AV, they did video, uh, slide presentations, uh, all that sort of thing, and uh, and then I worked at the board. Eventually, I I transitioned into um, into IT uh, and went sort of from AV to IT. But uh, the interest in AV basically came from those early periods in, um, um, in the, at the school and at the Board of Education and, and so on. So, so that's, that's the best I can come up with. It was a, a question I had trouble coming up with an answer to for you. <laughs> <laughs> how, how long have you been the AV person at Fairview? Yeah. Uh, that also took a bit of deep thinking, too, to try and figure that out. Uh, originally, the first person who did it here was Les Long, and uh, I took it over from him. And uh, the best year I can come up with is 1980, which would make it 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had, had sort of been involved with that, as well as, as doing things related to the property uh, mm -hmm. as well. So, so being, being the PA and, 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 and all that sort of stuff has been 40 years. So tell us how you've adapted uh, the needs associated with COVID uh, with respect to AV and, uh, and how you see that moving forward. Well, um, it, uh, of course, as we all know, it happened very quickly. And the first service we did was done on, uh, on Beth McIntosh's iPad, holding up the... <laughs> <laughs> holding up the iPad and doing this with it, but uh, we uh, once we discovered how much of a problem that was doing to be, I uh, I researched some some equipment and we started using uh, webcams and an old computer that I had and so on and and so we kind of evolved into the uh, services that you've seen. <coughs> excuse me, over the last 
36 weeks or so, uh, as long as well as the Fairview Lodge services that we were doing before the summer. Uh, and it, it's kind of evolved. It's been a, a gradual evolvement to what it is, and now we're evolving again into uh, a better and what ultimately will hopefully be a more permanent um, way of live streaming the services, especially when we get uh, uh, con the congregation back here in the sanctuary. So, Great. Can you give us a quick tour of these super duper new cameras? Or? I think we can probably do that. Um, they, they are um, quite powerful. They, um, I'll just see if I can give you an example of the one that's taking a picture of me here. Um, oops, that's the one that's taking a picture of Tom. Let's try the other one. See, I'm still getting the hang of this. So, um, let's see, it is that one. There we go. So there's uh, one of the things that we can do with the cameras is we can zoom them in and out like that. That's, uh, that's from the one that was taking a picture of me. You can see Tom sitting a few rows in front of me there in the, uh, in the thing. And then we can also move them uh, back and forth in you know, very wide range. I won't move them too far here, but just to give them. This is all from, well, I'm doing all this from sitting here at the um, at my little control station here, which most of you would probably recognize me as being at for number of numerous years now. You can get it back to where you can see me. There we go. As I say, I'm still learning these, so I, sometimes the cameras go the wrong way. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you'll, you'll probably notice that over the next little while as we get used to them. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, that gives you an example of, of what we can do with them. That's great. Well, I, it's been a great evolution, and uh, do you expect there to be uh, more to come in terms of the AV uh, for the future for Fairview? Yes, uh, they, we've just uh, uh, assigned a contract with a supplier to come in to install additional equipment. We uh, got the cameras ourselves, and both of them were donated by various various uh, people or a committee one committee and one and and me actually <laughs> donated the price of these these two <clears throat> so we're getting some additional equipment to that will allow us to uh do even more than we've uh, than we've been doing now we're, we're very limited right at the moment due to limited computer power but uh, once we get the new equipment we'll uh, be doing you'll see all kinds of new different things the powerpoint look will change the uh the um uh, all kinds of things will happen that uh, that we don't want to get too glitzy, but uh, we hope that we can uh, uh, make it uh, a more interesting experience for those watching. Well, we're very uh, grateful for uh, the grants that have allowed us to uh, purchase uh, this equipment and uh, for uh, a donor, uh, maybe donors that have also helped out with uh, in seeing the need for this equipment, and uh, so uh, uh, we're we're grateful for uh, for for you, Les, and and for all you do, and thanks so much for always being here for us. Uh, you always seem to be here, and and you do so much for the church. Uh, it is just uh, you're a real blessing to us, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the congregation and uh, thanking you for all that you do for Fairview. Well, thank you, Tom. I, I, I enjoy doing it, and that's one of the reasons why I've done it for all this long t period of time. So, so I, I, I do it so that people can get the most benefit out of their experience, both when they're here and, and now online. Okay. So uh, thanks very much. That's great. Thanks so much. And uh, until next time, thanks for uh, listening in on the Minute for our mission. Thank you, Tom and Les, and what did I mean we track Les down? <laughs> I think we were talking earlier, and, and the church has been Les's second home through this. Big thank you to um, everything he has done to help us with these services and, and uh, with the tech piece. 
there are many ways that each of us contributes to the life and work of being the church, and, and that's true even in these uncertain times. And so as we listen to this musical offering, I invite you to reflect on how you can continue to support the life and work of this congregation and church family, and um, especially as we approach the Christmas season and the end of the year. Joseph and Mary were living in Galilee. When Caesar demanded a census by his decree, they had to travel to Bethlehem, which was a very long way for them. Mary would soon, so soon, deliver her child. They set out at once, so the trip would be what they could see. They made no complaint, for they knew this was how it must be. Mary went happily from the start. When searching for shelter still offered to some But strangers were suspect and hearts were hard The hopes and the bones of the world were barred Mary would soon, so soon, deliver her child So in the dirt and the depth and the dark of the cave Flesh all the love and the life that our God ever gave. A beautiful burst of a brilliant sun, a once in a lifetime seen by none. Mary had quietly, simply delivered her child. pray. With these gifts, loving God, we present also ourselves and our varied ministries. May each of us be a part of your answer to the cries of the world. Amen. We come now to a time of announcements, and first up, we have Ruth and June. Hi, everyone. Ruth and June here with an important announcement about the Christmas dinner for the boys and girls at Central Public School. Each year for the past 10 years, our congregation has worked together to provide a traditional Christmas meal to the children and staff at Central School in Brantford. As you know, Brantford Central School has a very high number of children attending who are at risk. High poverty levels, high numbers of children living in single parent homes, and high numbers of children whose families need access to community support programs, such as the food bank, in order to survive. This has been a wonderful experience for our entire Fairview family, with everyone contributing in some way. This year, because of the COVID pandemic, we are unable to serve the children a full Christmas meal, as we have done in the past. So we've been working really closely with our school board partners and with the principals of both Grand Bell Victoria School and uh, Central School in Brantford to find a way where we can give a special meal to the boys and girls without actually going in and cooking something for them. 
And what we've come up with is that the board is going to allow us to purchase a Happy Meal for each child and deliver them to the school so that the children can have a special meal on the same day together. It's not the same as us going in and serving them because volunteers aren't allowed in schools now. But at least the children will know that someone cares and loves, for them, loves them and that we provided a special meal for them again this year. You can help this year. I know everybody helps every year. But you can help this year by providing a monetary donation that will go towards the purchase of our Happy Meals. McDonald's has been kind enough to give us a discount, but they'll still cost us some money. So if you'd like to give a monetary donation, you can do that in any of the five ways of donating to the church. Just make sure that you note that the donation is for the Central School Dinner. We're also including the boys and girls at Granville Victoria School this year because we've been providing them with lunches, and that really hasn't happen very often either because of the COVID pandemic. Thanks everyone. I'm sure you'll be as thrilled about this as we are that we can serve the boys and girls at least something this Christmas. Thank you Ruth and June. Um, some other announcements are our, our social gatherings continue and depending on the weather over the next couple of weeks if it's a really nice day we might be outside but um, we are offering the option of using the narthex. Uh, we're asking people to um, still bring their own chair. And of course, masks will have to be worn inside um, at all times. Um, but, but meeting in the narthex uh, will be a possibility um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, that social gathering time is also a time where um, one might pick up uh, the 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 paper bag to use as a, as a luminary for the longest night service on the 21st. Um, those who, of you who have taken part in a Relay for Life before will be familiar with uh, the luminary, a, a white paper bag that has a, a candle inside and that can be decorated um, with the name of, of someone um, that you're uh, grieving the loss of or, or other losses this year. We recognize that... Um, it's, it's a strange year, and it's, a, it's going to be a, a Christmas that looks different than usual. And um, so uh, if you want to pick up uh, the, the bag for the luminary, um, you can do that over the next couple of weeks and then bring it to the longest night service, which will be outside um, on the 21st at, um, I think it's 6.30. Um, I'll double-check that, but uh, it is, it'll, it's uh, been mentioned in the emails, I know, and will be um, advertised online as well. Um, a couple of things that uh, I need from you guys um, are um, virtual pageant will be taking place next week. Um, uh, oh, Zoom Ali Faithful. And I know a number of you have uh, let me know that you're interested in participating, and that's great. You don't need to let me know again. But if you haven't let me know, um, I'm asking you to do it by the end of today. Uh, Sunday, just so that we can get scripts and parts and, and know who's going to be taking part. So um, if you haven't let me know you want to participate, if you can do that right now, all you have to do is, is comment in the comment sections that you want to participate. If you've already done that, no need to do it again, but uh, do let me know today if possible. Um, and uh, over the next week or so, um, I'd like you to send me a picture of yourself, yourself and your family and um, maybe by your Christmas tree or, or with a lit candle so that we can see each other as a part of our Christmas Eve service. And so as we continue through our Advent journey, we, we enter a time of prayer. And um, I know we have a couple of celebrations. Uh, a little birdie told me that Brian, Brian Smith, had a very special birthday yesterday and uh, turned 75. And that uh, John Lavery was also celebrating a birthday yesterday. So happy birthday to the two of you and anyone else who is celebrating a birthday this week. Um, I don't have Deborah with me right at the moment, so I, I, I'm not going to serenade you personally, but, um, but the happiest of birthdays. Um, and I know we have uh, some prayer concerns. Um, June... Reed's brother Bruce um, is is quite ill, and and so we hold Bruce and um, and and June's family in in prayer at this time, and so let us join our hearts together. Loving and gracious God, we give thanks for the many blessings of life, for families and friends, for neighbors and loved ones, for for the various ways we come. To 
<clears throat> we join our hearts together in celebration. We, we give thanks for the turning of the seasons of our lives, for birthdays and anniversaries. We lift up Brian and John and anyone else who is celebrating a birthday at this time. We give thanks for the lights and the, the, the ways that we are continuing to prepare our hearts and minds for Christmas, a Christmas that we know is going to look a little different, but that we prepare to celebrate in, in new and creative ways. While we recognize there are many things for which we give thanks, we recognize that we, we come to worship as whole people with concerns and worries about family members and loved ones ourselves. And so we lift up the prayers of our hearts. We lift up Bruce and all those we know who are ill, who are grieving, who feel alone at this time. And so we lift up the prayers of our hearts, those we've named aloud, those we've written in the comments, trusting in your presence with us always. And so we join together in praying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to do temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. As we go forth into our day, as we continue our Advent journey, may we go with the, the hope and the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keeping watch over our hearts and minds now and always. Amen.